welcome to my channel, and this is a guide on Monk. I've been playing Monk since release of the game. I do know that I am not the best Monk, but this is how I play my Monk, and I do get pretty good results. So with that being said, this is patch 3.0, so it's going to be the level 60 cap and new skills. This guide is going to be geared towards new players, experienced players, you know, players right in the middle, you know, pretty much everybody. Now that the intro is done, we can start with the overview of the job. Monk has been the highest and probably still is the highest DPS job in the game. Monks are extremely positional reliant, so if you aren't landing these actions in the required position, then your DPS is going to go down the drain and you're going to be a piece of shit monk. Alright, so first we can go over the skills. I'm going to go over the more important skills, the GCDs, and we'll go over the OGCDs later. So firstly, and more important on the list, we have three different stances. First we have Fist of Fire, which is going to be the stance that you're going to be in 98% of the time that you play monk. Next we have Fist of Earth. Uh, Fist of Earth is really useful when a ton of damage is incoming and this is a way that you can stop you can mitigate some of the damage yourself you know what I mean and lastly we have fist of wind which I really only use to get around town faster <laughs> alright so the next really important thing is to let you guys know about the positionals now this is extremely basic but it's a necessity for a monk now this yellow circle with the arrow is dictating the way that the dummy is facing. The spot in the back where the arrow cuts off is considered the back. Putting your character directly where the arrow is is considered the front. Anywhere in between the arrow in the front and the open area in the back is considered the flank. Uh, here's a quick tip. If you weave between the open area in the back and the line closest to you, you will still land all your positionals to maximize DPS. This is especially useful for targets that are too big to get around. Alright, now we can talk about skills. All of Monk's skills are pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of executing them in the right positions that make Monk a little bit more difficult than other classes to play. One more huge factor that determines a Monk's DPS is Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning is a self-stacking buff. It stacks three times and have to be maintained throughout a fight to upkeep a Monk's DPS. For each stack of Grease Lightning you have, it increases attack speed and attack power. There's one more thing I need to cover before we start the actual skills of the monk. Monks have three different temporary stances they go through while going through their 1-2-3 combos to obtain Grease Lightning. These three temporary stances are Raptor Form, Coal Form, and Opo Opo Form. I had to say those words slow because I keep fucking them up, but anyways. The temporary form changes will become more clear once we actually dive into the skills, so let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, like I said before, monks work in a 1-2-3 type fashion. So as I go through the list, I'll be letting you know if it's a 1 skill, a 2 skill, or a 3 skill. Alright, so first on the list is bootshine. This is a 1 skill. If you've ever heard the term crit the bootshine, well we fucking mean it. Now I want you to pay attention to the bonus that you get uh, while you perform this move and oboe oboe form. Next up is Dragon Kick. A Dragon Kick is also a 1 skill. This skill applies a 15 second debuff against whatever you're targeting. This skill needs to be reset within 6 seconds of it falling off. Pay attention to the bonus you get while you're in oboe oboe stance. The last one skill is Arm of the Destroyer. This move really has no use aside from the utility you get from Silence. Regardless, just pay attention to the farm bonus you get. Okay, so you keep hearing me say farm bonus. What I mean by that is Bootshine will not crit, Dragon Kick will not place the debuff, and Armor of the Destroyer will not silence if you are not in Opa Opa form when you use these actions. Since I'm in Opo Opo form now, my skills will have the extra effects when I use them. Now we can go over the two skills. 
These are the skills going from Oppo Oppo stance to Raptor stance. Twin Snakes is a GCD that you should never let fall off, ever. There are GCDs where you can lose one tick and it won't affect DPS too much, but Twin Snakes is not one of them. During your rotation, Twin Snakes should be reset within 6 seconds of it falling off. 6 seconds ensures that you can get through a whole rotation and have just enough time to reset Twin Snakes. Next we have uh, True Strike. Don't ever prioritize True Strike over letting the Twin Snakes buff wear off. The damage from that one punch is not worth the 10% overall damage you'll lose by letting Twin Snakes fall off. Next we have, um, uh, this move is cool. Alright, so that finishes up the two skills. Now we can start the three skills. Three skills can only be done while in coil form. Once the animation finishes for that skill, you go back to obo obo form. So here we have Snap Punch. What I really want you to look at is the Grease Lightning bonus damage and attack speed. Grease Lightning stacks three times. So if you multiply the 9% by 3 and the 5% by 3, that's how much of an increase that you're getting on your damage and attack speed. So now you should see why it's so important for a monk to keep up his Grease Lightning stacks at all times. And you should also see why it's so bad for a monk to lose stacks during the middle of a fight. But sometimes it's inevitable. Kind of like the clips you're about to see right here. Keep in mind, even though you see me consuming stacks a lot of times before the boss becomes like untargetable, losing stacks is still losing stacks. That's 27% damage gone and 15% attack speed out the window. Next we have Demolish. This is a monk's primary damage over time. You want to refresh this skill in between 2 seconds of falling off or right after it falls off. Doing it too soon is going to result in a packet loss. I'll explain this in more detail once we get to the rotation. Alright, next we have Rock Breaker. This skill should really only be used when it's 3 or more enemies because the TP cost is huge and the damage really isn't even that great. Alright, so that covers the 9 skills you're going to be using the majority of the time while you're rotating through your Grease Lightning. Now we're going to continue on with the rest of the skills. We're just going to go down the list from here out. First off we have Featherfoot. The skill is pretty useless inside the raiding environment, but if you're just out in the world then it's a pretty helpful skill to say the least. Next we have Second Wind. Now make sure you read the tooltip underneath the cure potency. This is really important. That means blood for blood and internal release both go towards the potency for this skill. All in all, this skill is super 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 good. I love it. I want to marry it. Next we have Haymaker. Haymaker goes hand in hand with Featherfoot, but they're both pretty useless in the raid environment. Outside the raid environment, Haymaker is pretty good because the potency is fairly high and there's no positional requirement to get max damage from it. Next is internal release. This is going to give you 15 seconds of being super OP. When you're going through your rotation and you pop internal release, make sure not to use internal release right before boot shine. Boot shine is going to crit 100% anyway, so it's pretty inefficient to use internal release right before a boot shine. Next we have touch of death. Touch of death is a large factor in amongst DPS. You should refresh this skill when needed, so right after it falls off. You never really want to clip touch of death. With this skill it doesn't really hurt at all to use one more GCD right after it falls off and then you refresh touch of death. Next we have still peak. This is one of my favorite moves probably just because of the animation but it's an OGCD and a flat damage increase. There are some fights where you have to be wary of stunning the enemy like if it extreme for example but for the most part just use this the moment it comes off a of cooldown. Next we have mantra. 
the skill is pretty self-explanatory but it's super useful the skill will make healers love you use this when you know there's red wide damage incoming and see if you can try to help the healers as much as possible you never want to make things harder on your healers we have howling fist this is an ogcd aoe damaging skill this can be used as soon as it comes off of cooldown every single time keep in mind this skill hits targets in a line but it really doesn't matter in raid environment because it's usually just going to be one thing anyway you just use it whenever it comes up next up is perfect balance this skill is amazing long story short monks need time to build up their damage they have a little bit of burst but not nearly as much as a dragoon or ninja so what this skill allows you to do is rapidly build up your grease lightning while placing all your debuffs and gaining all the buffs on yourself which is going to result in raising your dps a lot faster than what it would normally take next we have shoulder tackle this skill is pretty self-explanatory as well but with the recent changes to patch 3.0 now we don't need to be at a distance to use this skill. It's an OGCD and a flat damage increase. So now if you know you don't need to switch targets anytime soon, then go ahead and implement this with the rest of the cooldowns and just use it whenever it comes off a of cooldown. Next we have form shift. This is a pretty good skill. Um, basically you can extend the amount of time you have before your stacks wear off or go into a fight already in co-world form that's automatically plus one grease lightning stack the majority of the time i use it for opening a new phase or opening without perfect balance pretty much you can always use it as an opening you automatically get one stack of grease lightning and then you can continue your normal rotation i use it this way because if you open up and oba oba farm or raptor farm and you go for twin snakes boot shine or dragon kick the damage is not going to add up to be more than what it is if you automatically start out with demolish and a grease lightning stack next we have meditation use this skill five times and you'll be able to use forbidden chakra to punch the shit out of something this is one of monk's hardest hitting moves but you have to keep in mind while you're charging your meditation you are on gcd however the forbidden chakra the skill at the end of all the charges is not on gcd with that being said this is a flat damage increase you should be using this skill anytime before the boss becomes unavailable. The rest is just strategical planning. You'll see how I use this skill in further videos. Monks have another skill which they can use to consume the chakra stacks with. And this is Purification. It's an OGCD TP recovery skill. I haven't really had too many real uses for this skill yet. It has come in handy. But never prioritize using this skill over Invigorate. Next up we have Elixir Field, aka Kamehameha. This is a very hard hitting AoE, OGCD, and a flat damage increase. Just like the majority of your other OGCDs, use it as soon as it comes off a of cooldown for maximum disrespect. The last of the monk skills is Tornado Kick. This is a monk's hardest hitting move. The catch is using the skill will cause all your stacks to immediately fall off. I have yet to meet another monk who is actually a fan of this skill. The only real use of this skill is knowing when the boss is about to jump and this is a good way to pretty much just say fuck you on your way out and that's pretty much it. Or right before a boss dies because more DPS so why not. Now we can talk about the monk's cross class abilities. Over time these skills have become set in stone so I highly suggest you use what I have on this list. First up on the list and 100% mandatory is Blood for Blood. This is an OGCD flat damage increase, a buff to yourself. While spamming this is an increase to overall damage, you should prioritize using this skill for DPS checks and mobs that hit extremely hard. Pretty much use this skill whenever it's available, but make sure to respect the fight and respect the phases of the fight. So if there's a DPS check and you do not have Blood for Blood up, you're failing as a monk and you're fucking fired. Next. Invigorate is another must-have skill for a monk. Several times you'll run out of TP and this is what you'll use to recover yourself. You want to use Invigorate when you hit around 400 to 500 TP. Mercy Stroke is another must-have skill. It's an OGCD 100% flat damage increase. That's all there is to this spell. Next up we have Fracture. With the recent changes to how damage over time skills work, 
the skill has become a priority for monks to use in rotations. It's a GCD, but it still goes for the same as before. It's a very TP inefficient skill. So if you know it's an extended fight and you're gonna be DPSing for a long time, do not use this skill, or rather just use it sparingly. For fights like Ravana Extreme and Garuda Extreme where there's a lot of jumps, you can pretty much just implement this skill into your rotation and just spam the shit out of it. We will go over how to do that pretty soon here. The final cross class skill for a monk to use is Bloodbath. This skill is extremely useful for several situations and it also works hand in hand with Mantra. If you use this skill and you're still currently attacking the target, then you'll recover a pretty good amount of health back completely on your own. Alright, so that's all the skills and now we can go into the opener and the rotation. So now we have form shift. The openers are a little bit different. Everything should start out in co form. So you can go into the fight using Demolish. So now if tanks can preferably give monks a pull count, that would be perfect because you can get more DPS out of the monk. This is my opener without perfect balance. That's how I open without perfect balance. Now I'm going to show you with perfect balance. In this next example, it's just going to be how to handle two enemies. It's a lot better to spread damage over time skills on just two enemies instead of trying to AoE them down. And I'll show you really quickly right here. Make sure the AoE skills that you do use hit both enemies. This rotation is really useful for a boss that has like a really tight DPS check that needs to be completed within a short amount of time. That's really the only time I use this. And lastly, we have the AoE rotation. Alright, before we wrap up the guide, there's a few more things I need to let you guys know. Mostly concerning Fracture, there's a lot of different variables that's going to decide whether or not you can use Fracture inside of a fight. Such as, does the boss turn a lot and mess up positionals? or does the boss jump a lot, or does he even take damage over time while he's unavailable? Is maneuvering limited? These are all questions you need to be aware of whenever you're attempting to use Fracture inside of a fight. And then once you figure out those answers, it's a matter of where do you implement Fracture into your rotation. I've seen it done several different ways but uh, I think I find it more efficient to use it pretty much just when you can. I say that because Fracture is a GCD along with all of the other monks core skills. So it's not really necessarily easy to throw in Fracture without hindering your damage. If you go about it the right way though, 
it is a damage increase. A couple of different ways I've seen it done is some people will throw it in every other one, two, three. So it would go one, two, three, one, two, three, fracture, one, two, three, one, two, three, fracture. The way I use it, however, is I'll throw it in whenever I have enough time on demolish and touch of death to where I can use fracture and neither of those will fall off. If you have fracture up and touch of death falls off, it's perfectly fine to use one more GCD and then refresh touch of death. I'm not exactly sure if this is the best way, but I mean, I've beaten pretty much almost every other monk I've encountered the uh, two years I've played this game, so I think it works out pretty well. A couple other things to remember is to refresh touch of death whenever it's needed, so as soon as it falls off. Also, refresh twin snakes and dragon kick at six seconds or below. Refresh demolish at two seconds or below. Try not to use uh, blood for blood at a stupid time and you'll know it's a stupid time when you die for it. Also when it comes to using like more powerful hits or OGCDs, always prioritize using blood for blood over internal release. The reason behind that is internal release is just a 30% increased crit chance which means whatever you're trying to crit probably won't even crit. You may as well just wait a few extra seconds and use blood for blood which is a certain damage increase not a chanced increase. Don't prioritize charging your chakra stacks over keeping your grease lightning. The damage you gain from charging the stacks is not worth the grease lightning damage you sustain if you were to actually keep the stacks. Keep in mind that touch of death and elixir field share the same cooldown so you can you can always pretty much just use these both together. As for macros I really use just perfect balance internal release and blood for blood macros just to let me know in case I might like miss my tooltip on the cooldowns. I use one of the macro and that's for my mantra just to notify the healers that I use that skill. Aside from that, uh, a monk should never use macros, like don't even consider it. Form shift has a huge variety of uses, so pretty much you're gonna have to learn the fight and figure out the gaps in which you can use form shift to get back to co-wall form. Um, this is all I can really think of right now. I hope I covered at least most of everything. I will be making more videos going over fight specific guides for monk and how to keep your stacks going, let you know like when you can and cannot use meditation to charge up your chakras, good times to use cooldowns, bad times to use cooldowns, pretty much everything I can think of to help you raise your DPS as high as you can for whatever fight you're taking part in. With that, thank you so much for giving me your time. Thank you so much, so much. It really means a lot to me. And if you found the video useful or if you think the channel will be useful, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button. I'm looking to hear whatever feedback you guys have to say, good or bad. Uh, this is my first video, so try not to go too ham on me. But that's all I have to say. Thanks again for giving me your time and take care.